Hey guys, how are you doing? My name is Rishabh and you're watching Movizium. So we use the internet every day and ever since we've had the Geo 4G, we actually seem to have forgotten about the good old days when data used to be limited and internet speeds used to suck. So today in this video, I'll actually be talking to you about a lot of things, uh, basically terms that are associated with the internet speeds. And also from my experience, I'd like to give you some insights on what are the various factors that actually affect internet speeds. But before that, I would request all of you guys to uh, subscribe to our channel and uh, also hit the bell icon to join our notification squad so you never miss an update from us because as far as technology is concerned, shit is about to get real and we'll be sharing some really informative content on this channel. Now, whenever we talk about internet speed, the first thing that comes to our mind is the Ookla speed test. So here is a snapshot from a recent speed test that I did at my house and uh, I can already see some people getting jealous over there. Uh, so as you can see, there are three things that matter over here. Uh, the first is the upload speed, the download speed and then finally we have the ping. So uh, as you can see, my download speed is actually 80 Mbps and my upload speed is 70 Mbps. So that should mean that I'll be able to download an 80 megabyte file in just one second and I'll be able to upload a 70 megabyte file in just one second as well. That's what it sounds like, right? Well, it's time to wake up because that's not going to happen. The thing is that internet speeds are measured in bits and file sizes are measured in bytes. So when I say that I have a 10 MB file, what I actually mean is that I have a 10 megabyte file. But when I say that I have an 80 MB connection, what I actually mean is that I have an 80 megabit connection. Now the difference is very easy. Uh, one byte is equal to eight bits. So uh, one megabyte is going to be equal to eight megabits. Now let's say I have a file that is of 10 megabytes. Okay, and I need to download it. Now to be able to download it in one second, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to have a connection that is of at least 80 megabits per second because 80 megabits per second will be equal to 10 megabytes per second and then I'll be able to download that file in one second. Now you must have also noticed that bits are expressed in lowercase b or that is a small b letter and uh, bytes are usually expressed in uppercase or capital B letters. So whenever you see those uh, small or uh, capital B, you actually know whether they're talking about bits or bytes. Now in case you're wondering why are they doing this, why are they measuring internet speed in bits? So I just want to tell you guys that earlier what used to happen was the internet speeds used to be very less. So uh, it was a very hassle oriented process to actually express internet speeds in bytes. So they just started using bits to express internet speeds. And now again, you must be wondering that that used to happen earlier. Why are they still using uh, bits to measure internet speeds? So what happened was all these ISP companies they were actually using bits for expressing internet speeds. And uh, even though with time internet speeds grew, they never really felt a need to change that. Uh, also, it actually sounds like a very good uh, marketing opportunity because, uh, you know, they can say that they have an 80 Mbps connection and they actually have to only give you a 10 Mbps connection. Next, we have the ping. Now, this is kind of a made for debate topic. Ping actually means latency. So what basically ping means is that it is the time needed for a request made by you to get a response from the server. Uh, so you know what, you actually can do a very small practical on this. Uh, right now, pause the video and hit a like. If it happens instantly, it means that you have a great ping. So now I guess you know what a ping is, but the reason I said it's a topic of debate is because when you actually do a speed test, uh, the ping that is shown over there is actually the ping with speed test server. So ping is not a fixed thing. If a website server are close to your location, then you can probably expect a low ping and then probably you will get very fast responses from those websites. But if a website server are far from your location, then you're going to have quite some trouble with uh, the ping as the ping is going to be more and it's going to take more time to get responses from those servers. So, you know, ping is not really a fixed thing. So, you know, no matter how fast your upload or download speeds are, uh, if the ping is low, then you can't really help it and your responses are going to be slow. Also, you can make out that depending upon the server location, the ping is actually different for different sites. Next, I want to clear a very big misconception about uh, internet speeds. Uh, now the thing is that uh, if you guys know, Jio has started offering its uh, Giga Fiber. That is, it's offering one gigabit per second of uh, connection. Uh, it's not yet available in Mumbai, but I've seen a lot of friends from other cities get it. Uh, now the thing is that uh, if you convert that into uh, real-time file sizes, you actually get around uh, 125 megabytes per second of speed. So which means that you'll be able to download a one GB file in just eight seconds. But will you actually be able to use that speed? I wouldn't say yes. I mean, yes to some extent, but uh, I just have an explanation for you guys. Now, the thing is that even though you're getting one gigabit per second from Geo, uh, most of you might not have a very good router. I actually have a TP-Link router at home and it actually has a cap of 300 megabits. So it can only support 300 megabits per second. Uh, so actually, even though Geo is giving me one gigabits per second, my router can only harness uh, 300 megabits. So it's going to be a complete waste. Also, the wire that I'm using, the wire that I'm using from my router to my computer, uh, it can only support 100 megabits. So it cannot even take the 300 megabits that my router can handle. Uh, so again, that will be a bottleneck issue for me. 
So uh, even if I change the wire, you know what? Even if I get a very good quality wire, my router is still gonna give me 300 megabits. So it's gonna be a complete waste. Now, if I actually want to use that uh, Giga, uh, Geo Giga Fiber's full speed, uh, I'm gonna have to buy a gigabit router, a gigabit wire, and probably even in my computer. Uh, all computers have LAN ports. Uh, so not all ports. The old laptops that we have, they do not have a gigabit Ethernet port. So only the newer laptops have the gigabit Ethernet port. Uh, the one that I'm using right now, this one, it uh, does have a gigabit Ethernet port. You need to buy a laptop or a computer with a gigabit Ethernet port, a gigabit uh, Ethernet uh, wire cable, uh, and a gigabit router for that uh, for harnessing the full one gigabit per second speed. Uh, so you're gonna have to upgrade all of your devices. This was all I had to explain about the internet speeds and how various factors affect it. Now a lot of you must be having uh, some really good YouTube experiences. Your YouTube must be really fast, and uh, the same thing goes for Play Store and Google Drive. Like all Google services must be really fast. But it does not happen out of magic. There is a reason behind it, and uh, I'll actually uh, actually want to make a video on that. But it's going to be a little long video, and I cannot complete it in this one. Uh, so if you want a video on that, just let me know in the comment section, and I'll, I'll actually uh, make a video on that. Or if there is anything that you want me to make a video on, just let me know in the comment section, and I'll do that. If you like the video, hit a like. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel, and also hit the notification bell icon to never miss an update from us and to join our notification squad. You can also follow me and Mobizem on Twitter for regular tech updates. And if you have any queries or suggestions, just drop them in the comment section. And I'll be there for you.